what's going on friends been a been a bit that it's just been me in one of these thursday night shows i figured that we would have a a, a week off uh from having these giant names on that we've had lately hope that we can uh have a good restful evening however i got some interesting stuff i think that we are going to maybe bring up some trivia by the end of this episode i got a little stack of some uh really simple horror trivia that we're going to go over and uh yeah i I think that we might be able to give away some digital copies after that uh it's been a a fairly fairly quiet week for announcements so we'll get through those quickly but in chat before we went live i asked what is the best thing everybody's been watching and uh, i want to see see what everybody said so Eric says, The World's End. Great, great film. Love that one. What's going on, Jeff? Glad you're here. Anthony says, 2LDK. We were, uh, Anthony and I were talking about that one earlier. It's a good movie. I uh, I put a review up of that one and two other films this week. If you haven't got a chance to watch, I suggest it. Alyssa says, Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched. That documentary is, uh, it is, it is dense to say the least uh that documentary is right around three hours if i'm remembering right and it is it's like a a film class in itself there are so many things that if you're watching that severin doc that you could have a pen and paper ready and just make a list of first off titles that are not in that severin box set and then just realize these are things that i am so interested in seeing after watching this documentary that I'm going to go bankrupt. Uh, Jeff said, Wake in Fright. I think you brought that up on Tuesday as well. Wake in Fright is an interesting one. If you've never seen it, certainly look it up. That is one. Uh, didn't that come out from Draft House, I believe? And then uh, I think it's got a UK release as well. It should be it should be readily available. Um, if not, I imagine it will get another release soon because that's still a fairly new one. And then uh, John's here. What's going on, John? Hey, Stendhal. Flickering Wave says, best watch this week was Hard Boiled. Nice. I uh, I brought up on the Tuesday show as well that I'm thinking of showing my wife. Uh, she's never seen it. I don't think she's ever seen any, uh, any of that director's film. So I think I'm going to do Hard Boiled and the Killer as a double feature here soon and just kind of get it over with. We'll see. What's going on, Jamie? Glad you're here. Skulder's here. Nice. What's going on, Skulder? John says, the Ozploitation movies I've watched are the best that he has watched this week. And he has been on an Ozploitation kick. We've been talking about that for a while, too. That Umbrella Ozploitation line is a winner. Uh, Let's see. Mitchell says, I watched some of the Island of the Fishmen. Is that that the recent Full Moon release? I recognize that title, but I'm I'm not picturing it in my head for some reason. Let's see uh r hilton says copa vin from the first chabrol set nice i do not have the chabrol sets i am considering getting them but i've never seen i've never seen any chabrol films if that's even the right way to say that um are they worth it for people that have been watching for a while they seem like something i would like i'm uh i'm curious about that I, i've never seen a single chabrol film let's see oh eureka put out wake and fright that's correct nice uh couch odyssey says attack of the blind dead was mine nice jamie says my wife and i are making our way through david simon's the deuce that has been on my list for so long and i'm dying to freaking see it i need to see it i need to start that uh antoine what's going on glad you're here ken is here hey ken recent full moon okay that's what i thought Hans watched Mad Dog Morgan. That's the uh, one of the other two films on my review. And, yeah, Mad Dog Morgan is very interesting. Certainly interesting. Eric says, Chabrol is the French Hitchcock. Oh, so basically you're saying I'm going to love him. Got it. John says, I've been so busy this week. Need to catch up on new releases. Everything, everywhere, all at once is on my list. You're not the only one, my friend. I, uh, I am dying to see that in theaters. And just the free time. I mean, I... I, those that, uh, that are a patron, uh, by the way, if you're curious, sign up for our Patreon, uh, by 
next, let's see, today's the 14th. So by next Wednesday, so that you can be on the giveaway for this month. But uh, we've been talking about the movies, um, Everything Everywhere All at Once and X on our Discord quite a bit. A couple weekends ago, I planned to see X in theaters. And like, I went out with the wife, we had a babysitter and everything. It was to celebrate somebody's uh, recent promotion at work. And <laughs> my friend... He talks too fucking much. So uh, we were we were at this. Uh, it's kind of like a little speakeasy. It's not hidden or anything like that. But it's it's literally just a, a very fancy, very hipster bar. And we were there for a little while. And uh, then he's like, "All right, everybody, ready for dinner?" And we go over there, thinking we only got like half an hour uh, until we want to be able to leave for the movie. And we didn't even get our food for like another 50 minutes. And then they just wanted to talk forever. So we ended up missing it. And uh, I am dying to see X. So hoping to see it soon. Marvin, what's going on? I feel like I haven't seen your name in a while. Glad you're here. Let's see. Skulder says, getting through my Netflix list. Las Leyes de la Frontera, a.k.a. Outlaws, has been the best this week. I don't. Yeah, I've definitely not seen that one. If it's a 2021 film, I got to see that one. Uh, John says another great movie is the bonus movie on the Death Game Blu-ray was great. Teenage Innocence. Interesting. Stendhal just finished Le Yellow Jackets as well. I need to see that one. Uh, Dustin. Hey, hey. Oh, Marvin. Look at that. Right after I talked about it, making me jealous. You've seen both of them and they're the best right now. I got to get on those, man. Uh, let's see. Sardis, The Forgotten Battle and started my British film noir box sets. Nice. I watched They Met in the Dark, 1943 and The October Man from 47. <laughs> I did not travel time to the 20s to go to a speakeasy, but uh, it was it, it's an interesting place. It's it's a very uh, narrow little establishment. They're between like a, a wedding reception hall and uh, like a uh, a Kansas City metro touristy place, basically. And it's literally like 10 feet from wall to wall, but then it's a long building. So you go through and for. Uh, like the front half, there's a couple small couches and then there's some standing room only around this little bar area. And then after that is where they're actually making the drinks, but you can only fit like 20 people in there. And so all it is, is reservations. So I, I went there and we just stood there for literally like an hour and a half and just talked and had a couple uh, overly expensive drinks. But yeah, it, it very much felt like a speakeasy because literally while we, while we were there, they had to turn away like three groups of people because... It was, uh, you know, they, they only have like a 20 person capacity and it was all booked. Thanks for mentioning that, John. John says, sneaking up on a thousand subs. I am trying to get to a thousand subs before I go to, and another thing to plug right now, uh, Monster Palooza is at the end. Uh, well, technically, it's at the beginning of June. I am going to uh, California for a Monster Palooza at the beginning of June in Pasadena. I'm hoping that we can get enough people from the channel and the community that are going that we have some sort of uh, a meetup or even like a uh, we all go to a screening together or something like that. Um, yeah, if you are going, please comment on the actual movie, not not in the chat, but not on the movie on the if comment on the video, not in the, the live chat. And I will um, try to take note of it. And, and we're going to try to try to plan something for sure. Quiet Rob, glad you're here. Missed the last two streams, and uh, they've been some good ones. I hope you're able to watch that that one last week. Super long, but uh, I think it's probably about time to get into this, huh? Let's go over the announcements this week. There's not a ton, but there's some interesting stuff here. And one of the things um, that we do have going on is a couple sales. And I did a video for the Arrow sale. E was it yesterday? Yeah, yeah, it was yesterday. And then there's a Blue Underground sale that I feel like people are overlooking at MVD, and they have some of the best prices they've ever had on some of their stuff. So we're going to take a look at that tonight, too. Um, like I said, after all that, we're going to do some horror trivia and give away some digital copies at the end. Still make a good night of it. Aberration says, just watched Imprint's release of Maroon and Conquest of Space. Uh, how are they? Are they good transfers and all that? I, uh, I ordered... Those are... Marooned in Conquest of Space. Are they are they March or April? Whatever it is, I ordered that month and the following month together. So uh, I, Australia has to combine those when it comes out later and then send it. So I'm probably not going to get them to like my kids graduate high school. Yes, Golder, there is a shameless sale. I've needed to look into that. I haven't even posted it yet. Um, I, I might be doing that. 
All right, let's get the announcements on the screen. Here we go. Uh, first one after the stream last week was Kino Loberer is putting out The Cop from 1970. This is a new 4K restoration. And as far as I can tell, this is a very French film. And I know nothing about it. Um, I've not heard many people comment on this one, but it is the first one that was announced. But this is the first one I was excited about. So last Friday, we got all the details from Unearthed Films on Dr. Lamb. And I did want to point some things out on Unearthed Films while we are here talking about them. So Unearthed Films is probably going to have an incredible 2022. Uh, Steven, I believe his last, last name is Biro. Can anybody else uh, confirm in the chat there? It's either Biro or Biro. I've never heard it said out loud, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, but he was live on Facebook last night, and he revealed a few things. Uh, a couple, I think, that we knew. That was probably loud. My apologies. Um, it is... Uh, Yes, so th there was one title revealed that I, I think we knew about, and that is Evil Dead Trap 2 is going to be getting a release from Unearthed Films, hopefully before the end of the year. Uh, there were a couple other things that he confirmed, but really not a whole lot of detail, so I'm not going to go into those yet. Um, one thing he did say is the hilarious house of Frightenstein, Frightenstein is still coming. Uh, the music is, uh, as it was previously, it's going to be a problem. Uh, they are, they're working through it right now, but it's taking a little longer. He did say the restorations look incredible. So we should be able to count on that soon. But the real story here is we finally have details on Dr. Lamb. This is coming from Unearthed Films on August 9th. And for those of you that don't know, this is actually sort of a prequel to the untold story. Uh, the cops from the untold story are also cops in this film. And I loved the untold story. From what I hear, this is nowhere near as good, but it, it's still it's still pretty damn good. Uh, let's see. Mitchell says, I bought the individual battles without honor film since the box is out of print. Each was five dollars. The the limited box is out of print, but they did reprint the box set in a standard edition just I think it was last year. But even then, it's like $60, so you are much better off buying the individual films for 5 bucks. It is a great deal to do that. Oh, nice. Marvin says, I'm probably going to Monster Palooza. Hopefully there are some cool screenings in L.A. Um, the only one I know of, which uh, we were just talking on, it might have been on the Tuesday show with Flip. Uh, we were talking about the assassination, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. That one is playing at the New Beverly on May... 31st, June 1st, and June 2nd, and I believe I'm going to be going to one of those, and it, it might be May 31st. I'm going to be out there for like five days, so trying to make an actual like event of it for myself. There's, I, I For those of you that don't know, because you haven't been on the, the channel for a long time, I grew up, it, it was called Southern California, but it wasn't really Southern California. I grew up in the desert, which is a good, uh, you know, just over two hours from LA with no traffic, so when I moved away from there i was only what year was that uh so i was 26 yeah 26 but i was a very poor and not able to do much around that time 26 year old so a lot of the stuff in southern california i've always wanted to do and just never had a chance so i'm trying to do as much as i can when i go back for monster palooza couch i've never been to the new bev it is it was the number one thing on my list uh that and I'm going to try to go to the Aero Theater and, and a handful of other places. I'm probably going to try to get some pictures of the Cinerama Dome. Um, it, by the way, if there are any ideas, leave a comment on the video, not in the chat, but just so I can go back to it easily. Leave a comment on the video with some things that I should do while I'm down there. Marvin, if you do, let me know. I, I'd be thrilled to, to uh, you know get a handful of people together. Eric says, I saw many great double features of the new Bev back in the late 80s, early 90s. And that's that's just awesome. That, that is so awesome. I, I love that it has that type of, uh, you know, this mystique that's been there forever. It's got like this long standing reputation. All right. So Dr. Lamb, a mentally disturbed taxi driver lusts for blood every rainy night and several young women are brutally murdered. He likes to take photos of the victims, dismembered bodies as his special mementos after sex 
with their corpses and stores their severed breasts in pickle jars. That sounds like a Cat 3 film to me. Inspector Lee and his team are called onto the case in this bizarre, nasty, and notorious Cat 3 film. Uh, from what I hear, this one's not quite as like shocking as The Untold Story or Ebola Syndrome or a couple of the, you know, the, the bigger ones like these. Uh, this says it is coming with Lamb to the Slaughter, which is an interview with filmmaker Gilbert Poe, who initiated the Dr. Lamb film project. Uh, there is film critic James Mudge on the golden era of Category 3, which sounds awesome. And that's called Three Times the Fear. Cut and Run, which will be film academic Sean Tierney, a.k.a. the Silver Spleen, remembers Dr. Lamb. And then a commentary with Art Edinger and Bruce Holacek. Uh, Atomic TV interviews with Simon Yam, Unearthed Classics Blu-ray only, Collector's Booklet, and Limited Edition Slipcase. And then there is a wild trailer, and of course, because of uh, the nature of the film, uh, what is in the trailer can't be on YouTube. So if you want to see that, the link to Vimeo is here on the post on my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you need. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot there. Nice, Quiet Rob. Yeah, if you're down there, everybody just um, comment up. We'll 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 do something to go around there. Sounds like a Nickelodeon film. Only the best type. But this is probably the biggest news of last Friday. Uh, the patrons that were going to be going to Cinema Wasteland uh, found out that they were going to be able to get an early chance at buying Tombs of the Blind Dead, the steelbook from Synapse Films. This, of course, is from 1971 and the first of the Blind Dead uh, franchise series. It's not really a franchise, I guess. Uh, Rumorg magazine broke the information for Synapse. And, uh, the, the steelbook is pictured on the bottom here, and then the top here is the slipcase. And then if we flip to this page, you can see the back of the slipcase. I like this design. It looks pretty damn good. Uh, if you went to Cinema Wasteland this last weekend, you were able to purchase it. So that's a good thing. Uh, but there are lots of people that are sort of trepidatious because of the fact that Synapse has been, uh, you know, upgrading some things to 4K. But they did make a comment about that. So they said, this is a 2K scan provided by the film's licensor. However, we do have 4K rights. And should a new scan become available to us, we're interested in releasing a 4K, but we can't say when or even if that will be possible. Now, there was some confusion on this. I wanted to bring this up because some people are saying, wasn't this supposed to be a 4K to begin with? Now, the reason that I, I guess rumor got out, what's going on, E? Uh, th the reason that rumor got out is because there was a film festival that had played this as part of it, or a convention that played this as part of the film festival for the convention. Hey, Dave, what's going on? And uh, they advertised it as they, the new 4K restoration of Tombs of the Blind Dead. Now, unfortunately, this is the restoration that they played. So they just had the wrong information. It was a 2K scan the entire time, unfortunately. Yeah, Mitchell says it looks very similar in style. Uh, Steelbook to Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. And I agree. That's the very first thing I saw, too. It was, you know, it screams a lot of the same design elements. Completely get that. So let's go into this. Uh, the saga of the long dead sightless knights rising from the grave to terrorize a group of vacationers has been restored from the original uncut camera negative for this three disc set. This limited edition to 4,000 units package features steelbook art by Wes Benscotter and a slipcover bearing the original theatrical poster, plus a booklet with liner notes by film historian and home video columnist Patrick McCabe. And all of the features have been revealed on disc one, the original Spanish language and English Spanish hybrid soundtrack versions, Lost lossless Spanish, lossless hybrid English Spanish, optional subs, uh, audio commentary by Troy Howarth, the, the man, the myth, the legend. Troy Howarth is freaking incredible. Another commentary by the star of the film, Lone Fleming. Audio commentary by Rod Barnett and Troy Gwynn of the NashiCast podcast. And then Marauders from the Mediterranean, a feature-length documentary exploring the history of the Spanish zombie film, featuring interviews with Night of the Living Dead writer-producer John Russo 
and a whole bunch of other people. Not going to go through that entire list. There's a lot there, including Paul Nash's son, Sergio Molina, and Kim Newman. A lot of great names. It's probably going to be a wonderful doc. Synapse does really good stuff on these. And I got to be honest, pretty much all of the boutiques do really good jobs with these documentaries that they do. Uh, this is something that certainly intrigues me. And then disc two is re-edited U.S. theatrical cut of the film. And then sort of an interesting thing, although can't really comment on this much because I haven't heard it, but disc three exclusive tribute to the Templar CD, audio CD created exclusively for this limited edition containing music inspired by Tombs of the Blind Dead, featuring tunes from Zoltan, Cathedral, Hooded Menace, Machitazo, and the Transylvania Hellhounds. So we'll see. One thing to keep in mind about this, uh, this will be available widely later this year. We don't have uh, any specific date yet, even for a pre-order or a release or anything, but it will be coming. Now keep in mind, this is the hard pill to swallow here. Two things. One, it is a Synapse Steelbook. So this thing by itself will probably be $50 or $60 and probably never on sale. That's just how they do it. Their stuff is expensive in these steelbooks. The second thing, as I alluded to, and as a couple of people here have said, Dave said, I would love to see the series in a box. Aberration says, I have the old Blue Underground Blind Dead coffin set. Needs a nice upgrade for sure. The hard part with this is we are, you know, we're collectors and we love to see box sets of these. However, this one may never get one because the rights seem to be that they are now split among different labels. Uh, Scream Factory put out the, uh, what is it called? Night of the Seagulls, I believe is the name of that one. And we are unsure who is going to put out, if any, the rest of them. Uh, the old coffin box set, which I should have grabbed it and brought it over here, but it is over in the corner there. It's nice and it's serviceable for sure, but they all really do need nice Blu-ray uh, really good at least 2k if not 4k scan upgrades that would be wonderful so we'll see how this turns out uh those that went cinema wasteland i hear this sold pretty well there and from what i hear from the people that have watched it said that it looks great and it genuinely it it is it fits right in with the synapse catalog lately of high quality upgrades to things but they take forever to release them and they 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 take their sweet time and they release a handful of films a year if that and they're expensive <laughs> um and of, and of course synapse is kind of embroiled in a little controversy lately with their uh release of thriller that seems to have been an unauthorized release but we still don't know all the details on that and i i would love to see them recover well because i no ill will against synapse I'm sure that when they were putting out Thriller, they thought they had the rights. I will give them that. But yeah, we'll see. There is more to come on this one when we get an actual release date. And I, now that they are back from the convention and all that, I would not be surprised if we saw this up for pre-order literally within the next two weeks. And it would probably be shipping very soon after that. They had enough to be able to have this on sale the entire weekend at a convention. I'm willing to bet that they will have them in stock at Synapse and at Diabolic DVD probably before, you know, May 15th at the absolute latest. But don't don't quote me on that. We'll see. Uh, next up, we got a glut of Umbrella announcements. So we're going to go through some of these quickly. A lot of these have releases elsewhere, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on them. First up, as part of their Beyond Genres line, which, again... I love the slips on this uh, line. I, I kind of wish I had been grabbing them all from the very beginning. They put out some really good titles. Uh, this is number 18, and this is The Devil's Candy. This also can come with a car air freshener uh, for the first, I think it's like 100 pre-orders. Not very many of those, but this uh, stars Ethan Embry, and it has audio commentary with the director, Sean Beer Byrne, behind the scenes, visual effects, music video, uh, TIFF Festival... Uh, let's see, men's style fashion interview, short film, short film, short documentary, all kinds of stuff on this. For an umbrella release, this is probably going to be 20 bucks. That is a steal. Tales of Vladimir, greetings from Spain. How are you? Good to hear you. Hope all is well over there tonight. 
Actually, it's daytime over there. Hope all is well over there today. Uh, next up, from their Films of Fury line, we are getting Bruce Lee's Game of Death. Now, this is clearly one of his most famous films because it is his, it is his last screen work since he died during production. But honestly, I, honest, I, Game of Death is kind of overrated, in my opinion. Uh, it, it is, it's clearly a, a classic in the sense that it's important for film cinema and history and all that, but yeah, uh, this is one, if you are collecting the line, totally get it. There are lots of releases of this film. But one cool thing is this includes Game of Death 2 as well. So if you're just looking for a way to pick them all up at once, great. Uh, this also has Australian director Brian Trenchard Smith on Game of Death. And I love Brian Trenchard Smith films. I'd love to hear what he says about these. I, uh, I'm, I'm curious on this one, at least I don't think I have any releases of this one left, so I may check this out and umbrella has been doing literally incredible work. Uh, we're going to talk about one of their best lines in just a second, starting now coming from their Osploitation classics line, the survivor from 1980. And if you do their pre-order from umbrella themselves, they have, uh, it, it might be sold out by now, but they have 100 day bill posters that will go along with the re release. It is single-sided, and it's only available till it sells out. And this one, uh, not a lot of people know, so I'm going to go over the synopsis real quick. When a 747 jetliner crashes and explodes, the Inferno kills everyone on board except the pilot, played by Robert Powell, who miraculously walks away from the wreckage, dazed but unscathed. Tortured with guilt and unable to explain the crash, he sets out with the aid of a young psychic, played by Jenny Agater, and a priest, played by Joseph Cotton, to overcome his memory loss and unravel the mystery of the disaster. And in the process, he unlocks a nightmare of madness, murder, and beyond the grave, supernatural horror. Awesome. Uh, the first 3,000 of these, so if you order these from Orbit, you absolutely should be getting them, uh, will have collector's edition lobby card sets. Uh, there is a 2018 audio commentary with the producer, moderated by Jamie Lenarder. 28, uh, sorry, 2012 audio commentary with the producer, moderated by horror hostess Katerina Lee Waters. Extended interviews from Not Quite Hollywood, which, I mean, we have gotten so many extras from Not Quite Hollywood across a vast number of releases that that Not Quite Hollywood is one of those projects that just keeps like supplying us with content for years, and I love it. What's going on, Cam? Glad nerds here. And uh, that is pretty much it on this one. There's an 87-minute U.S. re-edit in standard definition. I, I don't know why we would even want to watch that, but uh, I get it. Uh, Super 8 behind-the-scenes footage with audio commentary as well. And then Trailers from Hell with commentary from Brian Trenchard-Smith. Again, his name is on so many of these exploitation films. And Umbrella just really really goes into it. I, I love the way that they've been releasing these. These are a great, great line for them. Another good one, which is some semi-like indie feeling films, at least. Sunburnt Screams has been interesting. This one is Love Serenade uh, by Shirley Barrett, and this is from 1996. A lot of these have been like mid, mid 90s to like 2008, 2010 type films. Uh, most of the time, fairly small uh, sunburnt screens, it doesn't really scream what the style of the film is going to be, but it seems interesting at least. Uh, this one is Two Sisters Will Do Anything to Hook the Right Man. Sibling rivalry is at an all time high in this riotous, award winning Australian romantic comedy from camera door winner, uh, camera door winning director Shirley Barrett and the Oscar nominated producer of The Piano and Bright Star Vicky Ann Hurley. Uh, oh, aha. I, I just mixed two sentences. Let me say that again. Oscar-nominated producer of The Piano and Bright Star. Period. Vicky Ann Hurley and her younger sister, Dimity, are two lonely young women on the lookout for love in the small outback town of Sunray. When once popular radio personality Ken Sherry arrives in town to revive his dwindling career, the Hurley sister welcome the distraction with open arms, vying for his attention and affection at any and every opportunity. The honey-voiced Sherry and a sexy Barry White-inspired playlist turns Vicky Ann on 
Vicky Ann on to seize the moment and seduce the DJ in her own unique fashion. But when Dimity also expresses her amorous interest and stakes a claim, the stage is set for a high-spirited conflict between the decidedly disparate sisters. Uh, let's see. Not a ton on here. I mean, we got some interviews and behind-the-scenes featurette, interviews with cast members. Uh, nothing that jumps out as a must-have for me, but it sounds interesting. Jeff, sounds better than Unbreakable. Are you are you dissing Unbreakable? Unbreakable's a great film. By the way, the 4K of Unbreakable looks really good. That was a nice upgrade. Another coming from the Ozploitation Classics line from Umbrella. This is Thirst from 1979. This is a film that Severin had originally put out on DVD, and I would not be surprised to see them put this out on Blu-ray before the end of the year. They have... Uh, uh, what was the uh, they stone stone they just put out uh, for the uh, month of January or February one of the two Severn put it out but Umbrella did as well so it's one of those films that they're using the same scan stone also came out from 88 films so it's just all over the, the world right now but I would not be surprised if this came out from Severn again before the end of the year in fact I wouldn't even be surprised if this was a uh, mid-year sale title. Uh, this is another one that if you pre-order from Umbrella, they might have some of their daybill posters left. They're doing a hundred of those. And this one is from the producer of Patrick and Turkey Shoot. Comes a blood pumper in a different vein. Innocent, unsuspecting Kate is kidnapped by a bloodthirsty cult and held captive at their high security compound where she discovers that humans are being farmed for their blood. Kate's shocking destiny is soon revealed. She is to be wed to the cult's leader in order to create a vampire master race. Can she escape this demonic nightmare, or will she surrender to an unholy, insatiable evil? Boasting one of the most iconic Ozploitation set pieces with a blood shower. A genre-savvy international cast with David Hemmings and Henry Silva, and jaw-dropping stunt work from Daredevil Grant Page, Thirst is a frenzied tale of bloodlust that thrilled and chilled driving audiences the world over. First 3,000 sets of this is going to have a lobby card set. Uh, 2003 audio commentary with the director and producer. Archival audio interview with Chantal Contouri. Film Buffs forecast interview with the director Rod Hardy. Extended interviews again from Not Quite Hollywood. And then uh, archival TV interview with David Hemmings, Steels and Poster Gallery. All kinds of stuff. Uh, this is one that I am super interested in. John says both Thirst and Survivor are Severn, but these seem more stacked. And that is because they are exploitation films. They are from Australia. They have access to so much down there. Ah, uh, that's that's better, Jeff. Jeff says no diss at Unbreakable. Just saying the Survivor sounds really good. Uh, Aberration says the survivor is a good film with a twist ending. Robert Powell is cool. Stone was February. That's right. Thank you. Oh, was Thirst on Blu ray DVD? Okay. I, for some reason, I, man, I wonder if I just only had the DVD. All right. Interesting. Right, Nathan? Doesn't that just sound amazing? An Aussie vampire cult film? You, you pretty much have to check it out at that point. But Umbrella's not done yet. They got all kinds of stuff still coming. And th these are all coming for May, by the way. May 4th. Uh, from Noah Bombach and the World Cinema Line from Umbrella, they are putting out Francis Ha. This was released by Criterion. But a little interesting thing about the Criterion release of Francis Ha, it is not out of print, so <laughs> don't claim that I'm spreading that. But it seems to be pretty hard to find a lot of the time. Like, they don't print a lot of these and a lot of times when there's a sale at barnes and noble or at uh amazon when they price match this one seems to either be really out of stock or hard to find or only sold third party or something like that it is yeah it, it is certainly an an interesting thing i i don't know why that would be the case but uh yeah if you are having trouble getting the criterion release or just want to you know, get all of the Umbrella releases um, from the World Cinema line. Francis Ha is here, and it's a, it's a pretty good movie. And if you haven't seen it, highly suggest it. It's pretty young, 2012, stars Greta Gerwig. It's good. Most people know Francis Ha, so I don't want to dive too much into this one. 
Next one, they are doing their All-Star Comedy Capers double feature series. This is volume number five, and it is a Tom Hanks heavy double feature with The Money Pit and The Burbs. And most people have seen both of these. So I'm not going to dive too much into these. On these, I believe they are usually just features, uh, sorry, just feature films, not really special features. So don't expect anything on these. They don't really advertise either way. So I, I would guess these will not have anything else extra, except for maybe a trailer. Another double feature for their icons of the silver screen. They are putting out two Francis Ford Cop two Francis Ford Coppola films this time with Rumblefish and Gardens of Stone. Some big names in both of these, and uh, an interesting one for sure. This, these are two that I could easily see getting, you know, bigger releases. I'm kind of surprised this is only coming this way from them. Dave says, do we know if Severn has a sale coming up? I mean, they haven't confirmed it, but they always do. Uh, it is generally in June, and we usually do not hear about that until uh, usually like early May. Um, they they kind of let Vinegar Syndrome have their space on the, the May sale, and they are usually more like june 10th to 20th ish around there uh it, it's also it's also usually billed as a mid-year sale rather than a halfway to black friday sale like vinegar syndrome is so it is uh from black friday their big sale in november to their mid-year sale that's usually a much bigger gap like seven months rather than going from the mid-year sale to black friday which is usually only about five months which means they cut off titles earlier for their black friday sale comparatively so all of the black friday titles from last year should be on sale at the mid-year point so uh yeah keep in mind severin does most likely have a sale coming up yes vinegar syndrome does have a sale coming up the uh, memorial day weekend in may oh gardens of stone has an indicator release huh i don't think i i don't think i caught that that was a, a coppola film through them okay Interesting. That must have been uh, not not very recent. That that must have been a while ago. Interesting. And then Rumblefish, I feel like, is coming out from someone else as well. There's so many so many labels to keep track of nowadays. This is this is getting tough, especially with things changing. Uh, I don't have it listed here, but you know, I'm talking about things changing. May as well bring up MVD uh, MVD Entertainment through the MVD Rewind line had announced that they were putting out Drive in 4K, just like 88 Films is in the UK. But it appears as if somehow 88 Films is going to be releasing their 4K of Drive in the US, rather than allowing MVD to do it. Um, I'm not sure what happened with the rights there, or if MVD is just saying, hey, go for it. Uh, I, I don't think they would. I, I, 88 Films probably got worldwide rights for the 4K, so kind of a, an interesting setup. I, I'm not sure how that changed, and we'll probably never know. But um, yeah, that, that's an interesting one. And yeah, Nathan says Rumblefish is Criterion. W what, was it not just recently announced in the UK as well? I feel like it was. I, I may be wrong there. All the UK companies are the ones that I get confused on the most because we have Masters of Cinema from Eureka and then BFI puts out all kinds of prestige rele releases and it would fit well there too. So I don't know. Again, too many labels to follow. <laughs> uh, but this is probably the biggest title announced over this last weekend. Kino in 4K is putting out the Taking a Pelham 123. This is the original from 1974. It is going to be an HDR Dolby Vision Master from a 16-bit 4K scan of the OCN. Pretty much the best way that they can get this in. And it's going to look great. Um, I, I guarantee you this is going to be one that is going to get knocked out of the park. Let's see. Uh, no new comments. Um, this one, if you don't know, has an incredible cast. Walter Matthau, Robert Shaw, Martin Balsam, Hector Elizondo, Dick O'Neill, Jerry Stiller, Earl Hindman. Kenneth McMillan, Doris Roberts, and Tony Roberts. And, uh, of course, this is uh, directed by Joseph Sargent, who also did White Lightning. Um, this is one highly recommend picking up when it gets announced. We do not have a release date for this one yet, so I would keep that in mind. Uh, that should be coming out. The way they have been leading this last year, if it's one that they don't have 
uh, problems with the master, like Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind has had all kinds of problems with the master overseas. Um, it will probably be coming uh, about three or four months. I, I would guess this is coming in like August, maybe September at the latest. Next one up. Uh, they also announced that their Killer Kiss, sorry, Killer's Kiss uh, 4K release was going to have all of these in uh, all of these special features. Uh, brand new HDR Dolby Vision Master, new audio commentary by Imogen Sarah Smith, the theatrical trailer, and then it's going to have a slipcover, English subs, and that is coming on June 28th from Kino. Now, this is a Stanley Kubrick film that was on the release of... Uh, uh, the Killing from Criterion, and this got its own release from Kino. So those are both going to be coming at the same time. This is only 67 minutes long, and it's black and white, and it's probably going to look incredible. There we go, Skolder. Thank you. It is out from the Eure Eureka Masters of Cinema line in the UK. That's Rumblefish. Antoine says Kino is killing the 4K format in a good way. <laughs> yeah, we are all going to go broke for sure. And then the Blue Underground sale. Uh, we are going to come back to this slide in just a second because we're going to go into details on that sale and dive into some of the titles. Uh, but the Arrow sale, this is important to bring up. This was announced this week, and I did put out about a 40-minute recommendation video on this yesterday. Go give that a watch if you're curious about some of the titles. This is at the uh, Arrow UK site and the Arrow US site. There are some good prices. None that really struck me as a, you have to have it now, but there are some good ones, like the uh, $5 Battles Without Honor and Humanity titles mentioned earlier in the stream. Um if you are interested in these, make sure you keep in mind things like shipping prices and uh, other sales that might be coming up throughout the year. Now, this sale is going on until May 2nd, May 2nd on both sites. So if you are, you know, trying to focus on uh, the Blue Underground sale because you haven't got paid yet, get that one first. And then Arrow will still be here in two weeks. May 2nd is the cutoff for those. Uh, and then just today, we got some announcements from Indicator. Now, these are interesting. They are sort of fragmenting these. So this one, Bullfighter and the Lady, this is from Bud Bedeker, and this is coming on July 18th, but only in the UK. Now, uh, they say Indicator presents their latest Bud Bedeker release, Partly based on Bedeker's own experiences as a novice bullfighter in Mexico, uh, the film was initially released in a heavily truncated version. Restored in the 1980s with the aid of Bedeker and star Robert Stack, the film is now recognized as one of Bedeker's true masterpieces, an epic drama of romance and rivalry. Presented on Blu-ray in the UK for the very first time, this indicator edition presents both versions of the film, along with a host of extras, and this is where it gets super interesting for me including Bedeker's final feature, the semi-autobiographical 1985 documentary, My Kingdom 4. I'm super curious about that uh, documentary at the end. I have been loving what Indicator has done for a very long time. I tend to always champion them, but they are great. Sean's here. What's going on, Foo? Marvin, yeah, completely agree. Way too many sales. That Kino sale, it goes on forever, which makes it hard to not go back because the prices are so good. Sardis got shipping notices on Years of Lead today. Nice. UK does also have second run and third window titles in the Easter sale. And the, which one was it? I think it was third window. They're all like very cheap, like 10 pounds. Uh, can't really go wrong there. That's only... That's like $12.50 or $13, something like that. It's pretty damn great. Uh, speaking of indicator looking great, going to the next one, Putney Swope. Uh, this is a film that was put out by Vinegar Syndrome, and this film was by Robert Downey. And this movie, if you have never seen it, is great. I love this film. It is so damn interesting. It is, it is funny in parts. It's still very relevant. Um, 
It says, presenting the UK Blu-ray premiere of Robert Downey's satirical Putney Swope, taking well-aimed pot shots at capitalism, power, and racism in America. This key entry in counterculture cinema is presented in a stunning restoration created by the Academy Film Archive and the Film Foundation, along with an array of essential extras. Uh, I'm curious about this one. Uh, I've not looked at the site to see what specific extras are on this yet. If anybody else has, let me know. I'm curious if they have anything on this that is not on the Vinegar Syndrome release. Because I love this movie. I, I definitely want to see everything that I could. Eric says, speaking of Kino, my Kino order seems to be taking forever to ship. It was approved for packaging on March 26th, but still listed as now processing on the website. You are not the only one. Uh, I ordered in the very first hour that the sale went up, and it is still not shipped. And I got the same thing. Uh, I got another email a couple days ago, I think, that said it was uh, preparing for packaging. Or, yeah, probably the same as yours. Approved for packaging and still not shipped. So, we'll see. Uh, da, 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 da. What is next? Oh, yeah. Putty Swope, by the way, since Vinegar Syndrome put this out, this was only in the UK. Not sure I mentioned that, but just want to throw that out there. If you are an indicator completist, it will not be coming to the US release. Uh, Marvin says, I still need to get to my VS Blue of Putney Swope. It looks great, Marvin. Highly recommend. It is a wonderful film. Diary of a Mad Housewife. Speaking of Kino Lorber, this was also put out by Kino, but this release is going to be much better from uh, Indicator. I do think the Kino release has uh, somebody from the Discord remind me. I think it was a, a commentary that was exclusive. Uh, anyways, this is from 1970 and only coming to the UK. This is Diary of a Mad Housewife. Frank and Eleanor Perry's caustic deconstruction of male chauvinism also makes its UK Blu-ray premiere. A huge critical hit upon its release, the film earned Carrie Snodgrass an Academy Award nom nomination. How can I say Snod... Oh, I didn't even say that right. Snodgrass, an Academy Award nomination, and secured her two Golden Globes. I can't speak tonight. This indicator edition presents both the original theatrical cut and the long unseen TV version, along with an extensive selection of contextualizing extras. And uh, Skulder, I'm so glad that you brought this up. I was about to say this about the U.S. releases in just a second. Hold on there, because I I'm very curious how they're going to be doing this. Is this next one? No, this is still UK. Okay. Uh, first off, this one looks amazing. Coming on July 18th in the UK only, uh, Creatures the World Forgot from 1971. The last of a series of prehistoric adventures for the studio. Uh, following the phenomenal success of Chaffee's One Million Years BC, the film swaps dinosaurs for more adult content and earned itself an X certificate in the process. Even today, it still rates an 18 from the BBFC. This is a Hammer film and it will have archival extras, art cards, and an 80-page book. And it does look like it's coming in one of the limited edition hard boxes, just like uh, Mad Dog Morgan just did, just like uh, Corruption did, just like uh, Irreversible, those ones. It, it looks to be one of those limited edition hard box releases. This is going to be a big one for them. And I'm, I'm curious if this is the last one from Hammer for a while with the way they're talking about it. Uh, is this the U.S.? Yes. Okay. So let's let's bring this up now. So coming on July 19th in the U.S. only, not in the U.K., Love on the Dole and Requiem for a Village. Okay. So the numbers. This is where it gets interesting. So U.S. indicator releases are numbered, and they are numbered like they're just continuing the U.K. line. Now, how how is that going to make sense for anybody? Uh if you are getting these because suddenly either you have you have to import US titles that are in the US and not the UK or the other way around if you're trying to get all of the versions and if we have more months like this where it's some UK some US that gets really difficult i'm i'm super curious how they're going to be doing that i i'm i'm really hoping that they don't give the same number to two different titles but I don't know. It's it's curious. They, I'm, I'm sure they won't, but it, it's just an odd choice. I was really expecting them 
to start off with number one when they came to the U.S., and they did not. Flickering says, yes, uh, the Diary of a Mad Housewife. There is a commentary on the Kino version of Diary that features Larry Karaszewski. And is this the same John Baxter that writes bios on directors? I do. Let's see. I'm not sure. I mean, that uh, Love on the Dole is from 1941. So I, I would not venture that that is the same person. It could be. For anyone that cares, They Live by Film, who's been on the channel a few times, just released a podcast interview with Indicator's head of production. They have been trying to get that for a while, so I'm glad that they did. Nathan says, definitely not an Indicator collector. They are they are sneaky, one of the best boutiques, though. They are, they are, uh, they are very consistent, but they definitely have a, an odd catalog. Some of the films, you know, they put out like Vampires from John Carpenter, which... I love Carpenter, one of my favorite directors, and it's not that great of a film. <laughs> but then they put out things like this that are essentially prestige comparatively. Um, and then they'll put out like the Adventures uh, series that they're about to put out, which is essentially sex comedies. So yeah, a, a very odd one. They, they seem to be marketing their packaging and the way that they present these, at least, as very prestige films. And not all of them are. Let's see what is next. Not a whole lot left. But this is an interesting one. A lot of people have been waiting for this title to get announced. The Sadness. This is a 2021 film that is... Let's see. City of Taipei suddenly erupts into bloody chaos as ordinary people are compulsively driven to enact the most cruel and ghastly things they can imagine. Murder toward... Mm -hmm. I still can't speak. Murder, torture, and mutilation are only the beginning. A young couple is pushed to the limits of sanity as they try to reunite amid the violence and depravity. The age of civility and order is no more. There is only the sadness. Uh, this is one that is coming out uh, here, is talking about the Raven Banner release. This is from Canada, and it's coming in mid-May. And this is what the whole package looks like. This is the slipcover that they're using. And then the actual film cover is here. Now, this was, as of today, acquired in the U.S. by Shudder, which means I am willing to bet that this is going to be coming out uh, somewhere around Halloween from RLJE as a Shudder-exclusive Blu-ray through RLJE films. Uh, again, don't quote me on that. I'm just speculating here. But that seems to be what they're jockeying to position this for. They're going to have it play exclusively on Shutter for a couple months, like a lot of their titles. And then uh, they will tout that because it was so successful, we are putting it out on Blu-ray, and it will come to the U.S. Now, just like Skulder here is saying, I wanted to point out to everybody that did not know, this is getting a 4K UHD release in Germany. You can order the Steelbook now, and mine actually just shipped today. And it's going to be here next Wednesday uh, by way of DHL. It looks to be like a decent one, and it's supposed to have all English subs and everything. Eric says, for Indicator, watch the two Mexican films that they released recently. Really like The Phantom of the Monastery. They, like, Indicator US has been putting out consistently really great titles so far. Skulder says, I got the media book. I gotta be honest, I didn't even know they put out the 4K media book. I thought it was only the steel book. That's awesome. Jalissa says, I am going to stream it on May 12th. And uh, Nathan says, I get Shudder off and on. Shudder is certainly worth it. But if you if you watch a lot, you will not necessarily run out because they add things every month. But uh, it is something that, yeah, it, the, the content kind of gets tired after a while. I get that. And the last announcement for this last week is we are getting a, <coughs> excuse me, 4K UHD from Studio Canal in the UK on May 23rd of Stephen King's Cat's Eye. Obviously, this is from 1985, and most everybody has seen this, primarily because it stars a very young Drew Barrymore. Uh, also has uh, James Woods in this, and uh, Kenneth McMillan, Robert Hayes. New interview is on this with the director, Louis Teague, audio commentary with the director, 
and a couple other small things. But this has also been announced that it is coming to other territories following this. So I would not be surprised if this is picked up for a U.S. boutique release before the end of the year. It is a very, uh, it's a very known title. And we have not had any boutique release of this since this was um, released in theaters. So I, I, I'm kind of shocked that this is getting a Studio Canal release uh, overseas, but that could mean that we are getting that here. And I would not be surprised if it was Scream Factory that did it because they have the established relationship with Studio Canal. Flip is here. What's going on? Taking a break from work. The girls are out of town. Going to relax and watch some cute guy named Ryan. Hello. Talk about Blu-rays. Uh, Cat's Eye Blu-ray is just fine. It's no creep show. Creep show is so good. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet that there is a U.S. release coming of this. Uh, so now let me go back to that blue underground slide and we will discuss this sale. So MVD Entertainment is the one hosting the blue underground sale and it is now through April 18th. So you only have until Monday and it's 50% plus off of SRP on select titles U.S. customers only, while supplies last, limit two copies per title, per customer, per order, ridiculous, and then limit 15 total units per order. And uh, there is no free shipping. It is $6 flat rate shipping, no matter how many you buy. Um, and there's over, they say over 180 titles to choose from, but it doesn't feel like quite that much. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up this sale now. Uh, keep in mind the limit 15 total units and limit two copies for some reason if you want to buy more that's going to be one thing that you have to keep your eye on let me get this up yeah i i agree scolder i don't understand why mvd doesn't ship it they're literally a distributor how do they not have shipping uh, especially to canada that doesn't make any sense let me get this up i've already got it loaded all right this is the blue underground sale um, when you bring this up, I personally would sort by pricing high to low. And now some of the first things you're going to see on here are their 4Ks. Now, I have talked about this for quite some time. Blue Underground 4Ks are literally the best on the market. Um, as, as a whole, they are the best on the market uh, for 4K. They are really, really good. The ones listed here, Dead and Buried, great. Final Countdown looks great. Daughters of Darkness is a revelation on 4K. And none of these had been under $30 until this sale. So if you don't have these, make sure that it... Well, and if you wanted them, make sure that you get them from this sale. This is the best time to get these. And because it's from the distributor, I'm not going to guarantee you, but you are more likely to get some of the slips from some of these. Just saying. Uh, obviously, the Dead and Buried, they are advertising the slip there. So you know that you're going to get that. Scrolling down, Vigilante in 4K. Why did I say it like that? Vigilante in 4K, less than 25 bucks. That is an incredible price for a really great movie with Robert Forster, Fred Williamson, 100%. If you are anywhere near interested in that, again, never been that cheap before. Completely worth it. It is top-notch 4K. And so... <laughs> I mean, I the rest of these at 25 bucks. If you don't have them and you were interested, these are no brainers. Two Evil Eyes. If you don't know, this is George A. Romero and Dario Argento working together on sort of an anthology film. It's got uh, you know a couple segments in there. Couch says, "Too bad, no free shipping." I agree, but I mean, if you're buying six titles, it's a dollar shipping each. That's that seems fair. I get that that is not quite as cheap if you get a few. Uh, say Vigilante again. Vigilante? Vigilante. Vigil, Vigil ain't. Does that work? <laughs> uh, Maniac Cop 2 and 3. These are, these are both at least fun films. Maniac Cop 2 is a much better film. Oddly enough, I think Maniac Cop 3 looks better as a 4K, but they're both totally worth it. They, they're both fun. Both directed by uh, Bill Lustig from Blue Underground. And uh, one of the best audio commentaries that you'll ever hear is on uh, one of these. I think it's on Maniac Cop 2. Can't remember now. Uh, House by the Cemetery in 4K. This is a Lucio Fulci film, just like the New York Ripper, just like Zombie. I, I mean, how do you say no to Fulci in 4K? 
These are fantastic. Uh, Mortician's Wax says some of the prices are lower than MV than what MVD sells them for wholesale. That's why they do the order limits. Yes. So if uh, if you were Mike from Grindhouse Video and you went to sell these, they would charge more than twenty five dollars for the house by the cemetery. Uh, it would probably be about twenty eight or twenty nine, and he's going to make less. So if you're going to get them, you're going to get them here cheaper than Mike and Jesse at Diabolic and all these other places. There are so many great choices for 4K here. Nerd said, oh, interesting. Blue Underground lately has froze on two of their discs. I had to replace Dead and Buried and Vigilante froze, but I cleaned my 4K player and the same part didn't freeze, but hopefully it's not defective. I've not heard by that. I've not heard of that. That's a uh, interesting. And nerd, don't you have a, a like a, a really decent 4K player too, right? Huh. By the way, Mortician's Wax, I love your name. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, scrolling down, so obviously, highly recommend all the 4Ks, uh, especially the ones at $25. And now keep in mind, uh, New York Ripper, House by the Cemetery, Zombie, Maniac, these are probably not going to have the slipcovers if that is a diehard thing you have to have, which... The, these four films especially, these are great 4Ks. Just buy them and support them at this price. 100% worth it, but you will not get the slip. No big deal. Okay, scrolling down to some of the more, uh, more <laughs> not really obscure, but uh, less prestige titles from Blue Underground. First one, Death Dream. This is one that uh, I would like to say is going to get a 4K release, but this is not, it is far from a guarantee. I do think that eventually this probably will, but it's it's one of those that it it's kind of a toss-up. It may or it may not. Either way, it is worth the $20. Death Dream is a great, great movie. Uh, it is, let me pull this up here. AKA Dead of Night, limited edition Blu-ray and DVD. And uh, this has audio commentary with Bob Clark, who also did uh, Black Christmas and A Christmas Story. Audio commentary with the writer and makeup artist, uncredited Alan Ormsby. Uh, notes for a hum homecoming interview with the composer. Uh, flying down to Brooksville interview with the production manager. Tom Savini, the early years. There's a lot of stuff on here. And Death Dream is great. Genuinely a really good movie. Uh, if you're curious, Deathline has Donald Pleasance and Christopher Lee. Um, 20 bucks seems a little high for me on that one. Um, it's not really something that you are... Uh, I don't know. It's been out for a long time. Uh, same as like Death Dream, but Death Dream is a much better movie. Uh, let's see. Jeff says, I got Maniac, House by the Cemetery, and Two Evil Eyes, No Slips. That makes sense. Uh, I, all of those... Uh, I mean, In fact, Maniac even came out... 2020, I believe. Yeah, that's no surprise there. Mitchell says, I heard the problem with Dune 4K was quality control, not a disc authoring problem. So are the discs marked in some way? Dune 4K? The Arrow release of Dune? Let me know what you're talking about, Mitchell. I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about. The only thing that I know of that was a problem with Dune is that they released it without the documentary. I, I had not heard that there was a disc problem on Doom. Uh, coming up next, I would say Amsterdam is a, a damn good film. And honestly, this is uh, this is also worth 20 bucks, similar to Death Dream. Uh, this could get a 4K, and it's Blue Underground, so they, they kind of milk it. Not a guarantee. Uh, we'll go down from there. post apocalypse I, I might just be done talking. <laughs> the post-apocalyptic collection. This one, to me, even though you're getting three films, not really worth it. I, I, I don't know. This one is very old. Uh, I, I feel like you, you could probably get this one cheaper elsewhere. Uh, not really a lot to say about Down or Lift. Justine is okay. It's a Marquis de Sade. It's 18 bucks. Not terrible. Um, this is the really old release of Maniac. Do not recommend that one. Um, not that it's bad necessarily. I mean, it's the, the new 4K restoration, but just get the 4K of it. It's eight bucks more and it's supporting the company more. And I believe the 4K also comes with 
Uh, oh, it's got the special features Blu-ray. So the new restoration is not on the blue. But if you're 4K, go for it. Or if you might be. I mean, it's it's eight bucks. Uh, let's see. Any more that are standouts you have to have? Uh, I would say probably stay away from God Told Me To. We are supposed to get a 4K of that. However, um, it was delayed. Uh, not saying that it's going to get canceled or something, but there could be a mastering problem. And uh, that... I mean, it's it's up in the air. It could get canceled, but really great movie done by uh, Larry Cohen. Shockwaves. That one's fun, although that's that's one that will probably at some point get a 4K. I would not be surprised by that at all. Coming down here, <laughs> Stage Fright at fourteen or thirteen fifty, whatever. I think Stage Fright is really worth it. Uh, Stage Fright is good. I, again, that's another one I don't expect a, well, it could get a 4K, but I don't know. I, I Something just tells me that it's not going to get one, at least for a long time. Sardis saw 99 women at the drive-in. That, wow. And uh, not not just, uh, you know, seeing 99 women. He's talking about the film up here, 99 women. Interesting. Jess Franco film, 99 women at the drive-in. Uh, let's see. A lot of the rest of this stuff are going to be the really old releases. Fire and Ice was announced to be getting a 4K from them, but I feel like something was wrong with that. Uh, I can't remember now. It's been a long time since they announced that. Nathan is asking, is Baba Yaga out of print? I always wanted to see that. I don't know for sure. Um, there's a couple that seem to not be available anywhere, and they obviously most most of these boutiques do not come out and say this is out of print or this is going out of print. The ones that do, I, we are very fortunate. Like Shout Factory does that. Vinegar Syndrome does a pretty good job of that. Uh, Indicator, when it's the limited edition release, they do a good job of that. But some of these others, I mean, you're just kind of shit out of luck if something is unavailable out of nowhere. Quiet Rob says, that actually happened to me, talking about the disc skipping, uh, with Dead and Buried. Mine froze almost at the end of the movie. I got a replacement, and no problem after that. Interesting. Oh, and, uh, the Dune 4K. Mitchell says, yeah, for a bit, people were having problems with the 4K disc, but it was just the discs were damaged. Odd. Hmm. Uh, Skulder is piping in to say, Baba Yaga is out from Shameless, if all else fails. And uh, Shameless is having a sale as well. Maybe we can pop into that. Let's see if there's anything that uh, hops out as a must-buy now. There are a couple really good films that are still only on DVD and likely not coming uh, any any better from other companies. So we'll see if they are in here. Uh, obviously, Strip Nude for Your Killer is out from Arrow. I'm still curious how they're selling this. Uh, the Prowler. The Prowler's good, but honestly completely expect that to get a 4k at some point it's too much of a classic uncle sam is getting a 4k and it's coming soon i like june soon i think may or june one of the two uh the toolbox murders just got a 4k so i recommend that 4k get your eyes on that one instead uh let's see Not a whole lot else down here that's screaming must buy to me. Man, do they not have? Uh, For the Apocalypse, you might want to get uh, only on DVD here. But I I mean, I, I would have expected this one to have come on Blu-ray already if it could. Not sure if there's a problem with the Master or something. But this is a, a Fulci, like, gory Western. That's pretty damn good. And, uh... Huh. What is the name of that other film that I'm trying to think of? I thought I'd see it here, but... Oh, there it is. Fight for Your Life. <laughs> Fight for Your Life is wild. And at $7.50, it is a great buy. Uh, this is going to be funny for those of you that have seen this film. Let me see if it actually explains it on the synopsis. Uh, it says, some have only heard of it as the notorious gut cruncher in the tradition of Last House on the Left and I Spit on Your Grave. Others know it as one of the few movies to ever drive even the most jaded 42nd Street audiences into uncontrollable frenzy. 
This is the story of three escaped convicts led by William Sanderson of Blade Runner as the sickest psycho redneck in cinema history who take a middle-class black family hostage for a relentless nightmare of racist humiliation, sexual violence, and extreme vengeance. No sleazehound who's seen it can ever forget Fight for Your Life. Censored across America and banned outright in Britain, Fight for Your Life was released in various chopped down versions as I Hate Your Guts, Staying Alive, Getting Even, and even The Hostage's Bloody Revenge. Blue Underground presents this rarely seen shocker now fully restored from its original camera negative for an all new look at one of the most disturbing and depraved exploitation films ever made. So funny story about this one. Uh, my wife, like just being a kind, thoughtful person, noticed that i was having a hard time uh, a couple years ago and she went to my amazon wish list and just went through and saw fight for your life was on sale didn't read anything about it bought it and uh like a couple days later came and she's like here i was thinking of you and handed me fight for your life and when i put that on <laughs> it's a uh, fight for your life is a wild movie and uh she probably would have bought something different if she knew what it was uh, but it's worth it especially at 750 it's a good buy and if i remember right i think there's something wrong with a negative and it is up in the air uh if we're ever ever going to be able to get a blu-ray for that one so i would say that's probably a good choice there all right let me pull up the shameless uh uk shameless entertainment i believe Let's see. Shop. Oh, I should have clicked on Easter sale there. Okay. Use code Easter 2022 at checkout. And uh, a lot of these are pretty damn cheap already. Flickering. I always forget that. I, I've not... The, the name Bone, it doesn't scream Larry Cohen to me. But for some reason, yeah. <laughs> she did buy me the gift of <laughs> exploitation. Nathan says Machine Gun McCain is a mess buy. I've not seen that one. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, looking at these, we've got uh, the Stage Fright Blu-ray, a recent release from them, the Psychic Blu-ray. Those are some good ones. The Shameless, what is in this? Shameless Sexploitation box set, The Love Goddess of the Cannibals, Satan's Baby Doll, and The Beast in Space. Well, I am intrigued interesting and that's not oh it's out of stock of course uh viva this was just recently released by kino this is a whole lot of t-shirts there's baba yaga right there baba yago 14 50 14 pounds 50 shameless pop erotica fest diodato cinema of death suspiria opera dual edition and numbered slipcase they got all kinds of stuff here interesting I didn't know Shameless was selling a 4K of Suspiria either. Huh. Are they using the uh, Synapse 4K of that? Curious. And then the washing machine. If you ever find a chance to get this, let me see if the tin will come up. Here it is. This is, uh, it's not really a steel book. It's like a tin box. If you ever see this, I, I would pick this one up. I I've always wanted this packaging. It looks great. Uh, there are a couple titles that they have put out here that nobody else has. Um, I think we'll get to them starting on the next page. <laughs> so, just like that, the two biggest ones, Four Flies on Grey Velvet and De La Morte, De La More. If you are looking for those on Blu-ray, this is, unfortunately, the only place to get them, as far as I'm aware that are legal copies and they don't look amazing but they're the best that we have at the moment and they're pretty cheap plus you can use that uh that easter code which did they say how much it gives you free uk shipping doesn't tell you how much of a sale hmm i would be curious to check some of those out all right at this point, we normally talk about what's coming out next Tuesday in case you missed it. So let's get into that. It'll be pretty damn quick, I believe. Next week, we are getting heavy metal in 4K finally. In the Heat of the Night 4K from Kino. The Girl Can't Help It from Criterion. Ah, here is something I was going to bring up tonight. 
Night Creatures from Scream Factory. If any of you ordered the collector's edition of Night Creatures um, from Scream Factory direct and got the poster, I strongly suggest you get that poster of Night Creatures and open it up and take a look at it. You may want to email Scream Factory and complain about this one. Usually, <laughs> usually I'm one to say, uh, let's not complain too much. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt for, for certain things. If it's something they obviously fucked up on, I get it. But, oh man, uh, this Night Creatures thing. Um, I was filming my video for my patrons, uh, all of my pickups, and the Night Creatures poster is straight cut off. It looks like somebody zoomed in on it. And uh, let me see if I can pull this up. Uh, I don't, can you even see my cursor when it's there? Probably not. So there are, what is there? One, two, three, four horses there. The second largest horse, the one on the far right, it cuts off about two thirds of the way through that horse. And everything to the right from that point on is all cut off on the poster. You're missing tons of the skeleton dudes in the back. And I got to be honest, I ordered this one from Screen Factory because I love this art. I really wanted to hang this. Looking at it when it's out, it's so odd and obvious that they had this just botched. The Is it in that picture as well? It looks like it. Yeah. So in the grass in the bottom right there, there's a little gray squiggly. That's the artist's signature for this art. It is cut off. Oh, Jeff says the cursor is available. So let me pull this up. So if you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. Everything, so here is the signature. And everything from about this side of the horse through the middle of the signature is just gone in the art in the poster. Again, I'm not normally one to complain about that, but that is bad. Like the fact that you had an artist create this art and you can't even share their entire signature with everybody that might be curious to hang this art because it's, it's genuinely really damn great. This is a great poster and it's just ruined. I, yeah, I, I had heard that that was going to be like that. And I, I got sad when I confirmed that it looked bad. I, yeah, definitely sad. All right, I will get off my high horse and go on from there. Cabin in the Woods, there's a new 4K steelbook coming from Lionsgate, and this is one of those... Uh, what's going on, Chris? Uh, this is one of those uh, plastic slipcover protectors on the Lionsgate uh, steelbooks, so that'll be rad. Yeah, Mitchell, it's it's bad. Uh, what else? Uh, I loved Jackass Forever in the theater. I was talking to somebody earlier today. It's not one that I like go back to as a rewatch too often, but if you haven't seen it yet, it's really, really fun in a group. It's fun. Just just let go and watch it and enjoy it. It's good. Let's see. Ah, I should have used that. Yep, I, I need to get off two-thirds of my high horse. <laughs> uh, VHS 94. I have been waiting for this disc to watch this. I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, Rogue Cops and Racketeers from Arrow. That is coming out next week, finally. Miracle in Ma uh, Milan from Criterion. A couple more of the Ghibli, or is it Ghibli? Uh, Steelbooks from Shout Factory are coming. Cyrano, the film that uh, I joked about last year that I believed it did not exist because nobody ever talked about it, is finally coming to, to uh, physical media so I can believe that it exists. We're getting two more WC Fields films from Kino. You Can't Cheat, An Honest Man, and Man on the Flying Trapeze. The Humans. Uh, this is an A24 film. I am honestly kind of kind of shocked that it was coming to physical media. <laughs> I have that look in my eyes, huh? Uh, let's see. Girl on a Chain Gang from the Film Detective. They do really good work usually. Another WC Fields film you're telling me is coming next week. Uh, Manhattan Baby. This is the standard edition of the Lucio Fulci film from Blue Underground. That'll be here. But I don't think there's much else after that unless you are into these anime titles. Uh, there's a Cohen film, I guess. But that is the bulk of it until the 26th when we start getting a lot of other things coming. All right. Um, now, 
gonna go through some fun stuff now that now that we're through all of the business i uh i, I figure why don't just ask some fun some fun trivia questions so i pulled out one of my horror trivia games my wife and i have played this on some of our uh in-house date night during the pandemic and during our uh we have kids so let's stay home and feel sad for ourselves time and she gets upset because she can read about a third of the question and i normally get it right um but yeah, let's see if we can get some quick answers to some of these. Uh, I, I'm going to go through and try to find some that are not super obvious. And uh, yeah, after these, I'm going to give away a couple of digital copies that were donated to the channel. So first one, a group of young people are guided through an abandoned radioactive area in Russia in which 2012 film? A group of young people are guided through an abandoned radioactive area in Russia in which 2012 film? Type your answer into the chat. I read this one on top of the, the stack earlier, and I could not could not uh, figure out what this was because I forgot. Exi John got it immediately. I could not remember that it was Diaries for some reason. I just wanted to say Chernobyl. Yep, you both got it. Uh, let's see. Chris says Jackass Forever was great, like getting together with old dumbass friends. Nathan says can't wait for the Northman. Uh, Julissa, yes, I have tried Framed. I was going to use it today, but let me see if it works because I, I already no, it's yeah, I already did it today. So if I were to go do it, it would show what the answer was. Sadly, um, I, I will remember to not do it next time. Uh, for anybody that has fallen. Uh, fallen victim to the Wordle uh, craze that has hit America lately. There's some fun ones out there. Uh, there is, what is the other one? It is movie, uh, movie D-L-E, like Wordle, but movie dull, <laughs> dot A-P-P. And that one is actually pretty damn good. It literally, uh, it has uh, two curtains and it counts down three, two, one. And then the curtains open and it shows you a one second fast forward of the entire film. And you have to guess what it was. So like, what can your eyes grab onto and see if you can answer it? And it's, it can be tough on some days. Uh, Framed.wtf is great. You, what happens is they show you just a, a difficult frame from a film that you have to guess what it's from. And then you have six guesses. If you guess the first one and you miss it, go to uh, that one and it will, uh, you know, go to the second try and it'll be a little bit easier all the way up to something that's super easy. And most of them have been, uh, obviously most of them are mainstream, but most of them have been fairly easy to get by like the third or fourth one. Nathan says, I'm a Quartal master. Wordle is too easy. Quartal is, Quartal gets tough. Oh, Hoax says, if I go into an incognito tab, it will work. Let me see. Can I, can I add that to this? Okay. So the problem is because I would have to, sh well, let me see if I can share that. New incognito. Let me see if I can share it from here now, now that it's incognito. <laughs> Chris is just now guessing Chernobyl Diaries. You must have a crazy leg. Okay, so framed will work. I'm going to have to pull it up again so I can see it, but here we go. This is framed. I will zoom in a little bit so we can see it bigger on here. And it is an online game. You just go to framed.wtf. And looking at this, if you can't figure out what it is, uh, it's black and white, looks fairly modern. Somebody says, like, the mink. Nope, that's not it. Uh, don't know what this is. It, you know, Arrow put out that movie. Nope, it's not that crucial job my car. Who knows what it is? Let's say Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Just for fun. Obviously wrong. But then look. Oh, it's a list, and it's black and white. I bet I know what that is. And of course, when you get it right, they tell you you got it in three tries, and then you can share it on social media. It's a lot of fun. I, I highly suggest checking out Framed. It's great. Scolder got framed on the second one today. Nice. Ah, uh, Flickering says, Actoral is a real head scratcher. Eight guesses to find the actor that is common to a series of films. 
I, I mean, let's pull it up. I, I think I've done that one once and I forgot it existed. <laughs> let me let me pull it up. We'll do today's. Uh, da, 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 share screen. All right. Let me zoom in a little bit and make it bigger for everybody. So the way they do this is they tell you the year. There is a set number of digits for the titles here, but they're all X'd out. And then it tells you the genres and the IMDb scores. Now, uh, unless I don't know, there is no hints or anything like that on these. Um, let me see if it tells you. Guess the actor who played in all of these. You have eight guesses, so be smart with your choices. If you find an actor from one of the listed movies, the title will be revealed. A guest actor's age is displayed with a green background if it matches, yellow if the difference is less than 10 years, and red if it's more than 10 years. Share your success or defeat. So here is our current one. The, the oldest that they're showing is 1999. We got 2001, 4, 5. The way I've been looking at these is see, seeing if any of them pop out. Like, uh, not a lot of people have musicals. So if you ever see a musical, that's... A, a semi easy one to grab onto. And if you if you already got today's, don't guess on this one. Uh just give it some time. Let let everybody else have a chance here. Um I'm going to see if anything really pops up here. And and a lot of these if you can guess, you know, based on the number of X's, you might be able to think of the title. Like obviously when there's 3 at the beginning, that's usually the Um let's see. Uh, biography could be a good one. Biography, drama, history. One, two, three, four, five, seven digits in the title. Any guesses on this one for anybody that didn't play today? Or any actors that you want me to put in that you think this could be? The last title, by the way, is in 2016. Biography, crime, drama. Sardis says Tom Hanks. So let's guess Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. So uh, Tom Hanks is 65, and it's more than 10 years age difference. So it is not Tom Hanks. Uh, man, I'm kind of surprised it stops in 2016 there. <laughs> Nathan says John Cena. Well, that might help with the, uh, the age, so let's put it in. Oh, it is. <laughs> John Cena's not even an option. <laughs> I was genuinely going to do it, too. Let's pull one out here at least. Hmm. Any other good guesses? We got almost 50 people here. I'm trying to think. This 2009 romance here. What about Matthew McConaughey? That was right around the time he stopped doing them. He's got a romance in 99. Not nah, still 10 years off. Interesting. Jalissa says Will Smith. He's got to be around McConaughey's age, so that might not be perfect. Oh, dang. Yeah, he's real close to McConaughey's age. It's got to be either much younger or much older. Uh, I did not see those symbols before, so probably younger. Who is a younger... Let's go younger, Couch. Let's go younger than Daniel Day-Lewis. Uh, let's see. Ten things... Ten things I hate... Okay. So is it... Uh, what about Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Does that work with some of these other ones? Uh, he was in... I-N-C-E-P-T-I... Yep. I bet that's him because 2010 would be Inception... Let's try that. Joseph Gordon. Yep, look at that. Boom. Not too bad. Nice pull on the 10 things I hate about you, Rob. That's what got me to that. That helped a lot. I love these little games. They're, they're fun to do. I, I tend to do these when I have a, a meeting at work because I've got my work screens here and I put my laptop next to me so I can watch things while I work. And uh, yeah, during quiet time, where I have to listen, I can pull over and uh, pull those up and go at it. All right, let's give away a digital copy of a film. 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to give away, if you don't have it, a copy of Sicario. Sicario. So you're going to go to movieredeem.com. Movieredeem.com. And what you are going to enter is going to be pasted in the chat. Movieredeem.com. And please only do this if you actually want the film. We had a viewer that donated these. <laughs> Jeff, it genuinely is tax dollars of work. I love it. Oh, Flickering got Zoe Deschanel. Yeah, that helps a lot. Uh, this was donated by our friend Derek Ambrose, friend of the channel. And if you go to movieredeem.com and enter in this code that I just put in the chat, you should get Sicario. If it works and you got it, please let me know so I know that I can delete this. But let's go for one that maybe not everybody has seen. Uh, I don't know if this is 2022 or the original, but I have a copy of Scream to give away as well. Scream. And uh, Derek also donated this one. So Derek, again, you're a legend. I appreciate you. And uh, we have not had a chance to give these away for a couple of weeks. So I've been hanging on to them. I, again, highly appreciate it because a lot of people have gotten these and just thanked the channel for some free movies. And I genuinely want to pass along that thanks to you. So for Scream, if you want to try it out, go to ParamountMovies.com. ParamountMovies.com. And you're going to enter that second code I just pasted in the chat. There you go. All right, everybody. We are coming up on what I would think would be the end of the show. I only asked one horror question, I think. Let me ask like two more, see what people can say here. Here's a good one. What legendary funny man duo encounter all kinds of classic monsters in their Meet the Monsters movies. People should know that one. What's going on, Jake? Butt soup. That's a wonderful comment. I hope you're doing all right. What legendary funny duo? Oh, look at that. Chris. Oh, Chris is on time now. <laughs> Rob got scream. Nice. That thanks for helping tonight. That that is that is your award for getting 10 things I hate about you. All kinds of people coming in with Abbott and Costello now. Nice. Uh let's see. Here's one. A little bit of uh behind the scenes. <laughs> Mitchell says it changed to about and Costello. <laughs> Gotta love autocorrect. Uh, this is one that I don't see a lot of people talking about the movie Fallen very often. What Rolling Stones ballad is sung by the demon Azrael as he possesses bodies in the Denzel Washington film Fallen? And after we get that one, we will likely call it a night. Anybody know the fallen question? Nice. Cinematic Circus got it. Very nice. Time is on my side. There we go. There's Jeff and Rob both getting it too. All right. A couple last second things to throw out there, and then we'll let you all go for the night. Reminder, uh, Patreon, you have until next Wednesday to sign up for this month if you want to be eligible for the giveaway for the month of April. And uh, this is going to be available in a podcast tomorrow morning. There's a bonus episode. The episode I did with Foo for Thought, that's coming out next Monday, I believe it's scheduled for. And uh, yeah, just keep everything in mind. There's all kinds of social media going on out there for Disconnected. All kinds of things that we can keep in line about. More videos happening three times a week. And if there's ever anything I can do, just make sure you post a comment below on the video. And I will respond like I always do. Rob says, I couldn't get that song out of my head after watching the movie. Um, yeah, it's Fallen is decent. It's not, I don't know, it's it's overlooked now at this point. Does that even have a Blu-ray? I feel like it was on a double feature. 
with like a Johnny Depp film, like Secret Window or something like that. I'm not sure. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we're racing towards a thousand subs before I go to Monster Palooza next month. If you haven't subbed, please do below. Give a like to the video and uh, share with anybody who is into boutiques. I, I appreciate all of you guys' uh, continued support and hanging out here every single Thursday. It's a good time every week. And the last few have been huge. I mean, Mike from Grindhouse, Brad from Vinegar Syndrome, Mark from Orbit DVD. I got some more coming. I just wanted to have an off night, let everybody woosa and breathe a little bit. So again, thank you so much. As I always say, from one collector to all of you, please have a good night. And uh, just as we go out here, thanks again to all of the current patrons. I appreciate you all. You're helping the channel more than you know. See you guys next time.